clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping, and give it up for Simpson! Like numb your whole ring, get your yeah. numb your whole ring. And I really kind of wish I had like somebody back here, like, you better be funny, bitch! <laughs> be like, hey! Well, I can tell it's gonna be a crazy night. I've seen him, he's really funny. Yay, Joe Samson, we love you. Break a leg, baby. I am nervous as hell, okay? <laughs> like, I am so nervous, like. Oh my god, I am a hot bitch right now. <laughs> I have to go out on stage and be a funny bitch. Keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping, and give it up for Simpson! Y'all need to cut that shit out right now. Don't be pointing at me, bitch. I know I owe you five dollars. Sit down, okay? Oh my God. Y'all will not make a bitch emotional this evening, okay? I already have cried. That half a beat my face to the gods. Okay, hold on. I gotta do like the kids do it. The girls do it like this. She beat it to the gods. Tell all those bitches they can go suffer. No. No, this is a really, really wonderful time. Thank y'all for coming out to support this event tonight. I love y'all too. Thank y'all so much. This is so beautiful. Thank y'all. Okay, y'all not gonna keep hollering. I know what my name is, okay? Chill your ass out. I do want to say this is very, very special to me because, for one, this evening I'm making history. This is the, sta the same stage that Duke Ellington and Miles Davis and Billie Holiday and Moms Mabley and all these black history pioneers, they paved the way on this very stage. And this evening I'm the first black gay male comedian to grace this stage. And I really thank y'all for coming out to support this event. Like, this is really beautiful. Everybody's working. Oh, look at them. And they are working so diligently, the people who bring the food. I don't know what you call them. The, um, the people, I don't know, give it up. Huh? The, I don't know, give it up for the help. Thank you. <laughs> They're working so diligently, bringing that water out here. And bringing y'all lemon water and some of y'all bitches, y'all just ordering lemon water and got y'all little sugar packets making table made lemonade and shit. Like y'all really, y'all need to cut that shit out. Like y'all really do. No, I'm really happy though to be here because it was a lot of shit and I was paranoid. Like because I knew I had this show coming up. This is a taping and like I knew that I had this show coming up. So I was paranoid as hell. Like I'm talking about and we got all these like gays and stuff in here. This is. I can see the straight people, the straight people are like, you ain't talking to me. I ain't good. No, this is nice. I feel like I'm at a church service, like a Greater Mount Calvary. Um, <laughs> tell the truth, shame the devil. Okay. And people get mad at me for talking about that stuff, too. I'm like, y'all need to be cussing them pastors out and telling y'all y'all going to hell, okay? I don't care what church you're going to. If they talking that shit, you get up, you get out of there, okay? You know, plain and simple. Because I took my $2 and walked the hell up out of there a long time ago, okay? No, that's what you do. You go to the church, you put in, you put in five, you take out 20. That's what you do, okay? <laughs> No, this is good though. I was actually, I was really, really paranoid. I'm talking about like when I was getting ready for this show, I wasn't going outside. I was like, what if I get hit by a car? I ain't gonna make it to the highway, you know? I wasn't playing with babies. I ain't want no germs. I ain't want no cold. I ain't play with nobody's dog. I was like, could that dog bite a bitch? Then I'd be in the hospital. I don't got time. 
I was paranoid as hell. Actually, I've been doing a whole lot of stuff. Um, because I do a lot of crazy shows in between these gigs, too. I perform at all kinds of places. I perform at churches. I perform at strip clubs, STD clinics, Popeye's lobbies, strip clubs, ja uh, what is it, tarot card chambers, like name somewhere, and I perform there. You know, I do a lot of crazy shows. I, um, I performed at some old folks' homes. Them old folks' homes was off the hook, okay? Because, see, I was thinking I could write a whole bunch of really, really stupid jokes. You know, like, knock, knock, who's there? Jehovah Witnesses, stuff like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and y'all, them old people just booed me off the stage. It was, it was, and it's not like, oh, not like a boo, but, you know, old people boo you with this look like. They gave me that, right? And so I was all offended and everything. I was like, you know what? Fuck y'all old people. I hope y'all choke on y'all rice pudding in here. <laughs> like, how dare y'all? Y'all 75, 80, 85, 90 years old. How dare you try to shit on my dreams? You know, stuff like that. And so I was all, I was all offended and everything. And I got to the last old folks home all distraught and everything. And I got there and them old people were off the hook, okay? They were out there. This one lady was smoking. I don't know what it was. I, it smelled like a cigarette. I don't know what it was. It looked like a cigarette. I don't know what it was. Them old people, they were in there off the hook. They were in there listening to Lil Wayne and Drake and Nicki Minaj. And it's a strange thing to walk up to a table to an old man like, hey, how you doing? He's like, oh, so you fancy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what did you just say? I didn't know this, too. This does not leave a room, what I'm about to tell y'all. I did not know this. I did not know those old people have sex in those nursing homes. Did y'all know that? I did not know. You said like rabbits. I didn't. I don't think they move that fast, but they get it in. Okay. <laughs> no, I didn't know that they have sex in those nursing homes. This is how I found out. So I went before my show at the last old folks' home, and I went to go get me a Snapple, right? Because a bitch got to watch their figure, okay? And <laughs> I went to go get me a Snapple, and so on the way to get my Snapple, they had this exotic novelty shop set up, right? Y'all know what exotic novelty is, right? It's like a porno shop, basically. And I said, let me go check this shit out. And I went in there, y'all, they had all kinds of freak shit in there. They had condoms, lube, Playboy magazines, edible depends. I'm talking about all kinds of trifling shit. It was just. I was like, I can't believe this shit right here. I mean, it was crazy. No, so I am. Like, I'm really happy to be here in front of y'all. Y'all are a beautiful house. And I love what I do and I take what I do seriously because, like, I don't know. Did y'all take the second to look across the table at the person sitting across from you? Like, these are moments where we all come together because we all come in here with baggage. Like, we have different things that are going on in our personal lives. You never know what's going on when you look at somebody. So, allowing me to be here in this moment and create just a little little bit of laughter. It means a lot to me. So thank y'all. And again, before we get to the stuff, let me tell y'all, y'all don't know how many goddamn no's I heard to get to this point right here. I had, I heard so many no's getting to this stage, goddamn it. I thought I was Paula Dean. I was like, God damn. <laughs> I'm talking about everybody was like, no, we don't want to be associated with that. No, we don't want to be associated with that. And so I prayed, and thank God we got, like, we, it, all it took was one yes, so and we got up in here, okay? And I'm going to also use this as a moment to say, so no matter what it is that you're trying to achieve, don't let the motherfucker tell you no. Be like, bitch, who the fuck are you? I will cut a bottle on the curb and cut you, bitch. You know? <laughs> You got to let people know, you know, and I'm talking about because I believe in what I do. I love what I do. Doing comedy has actually saved my life. And I mean, why not go after what it is that you want to do? I'm talking about I had conversations with friends. It's bitches out here now getting famous for doing shit like eating cinnamon. OK, you know, and having bronchitis. I mean, come on now. Like this bitch got famous for having bronchitis. Like seriously. So surely talented bitches should be able to st be stand up and be seen. Like, I mean, seriously. 
And I think any time is a good time to laugh because we live in some crazy times. Like we live in a time where people are laughing at politicians and getting upset with comedians. I mean, seriously, like it's some crazy shit. And I like to watch the news a lot to see all the stuff that's going on because you see some crazy shit when you watch the news, right? Because see, I'm a hardcore liberal Democrat, but occasionally I do watch Fox News, right? Let me tell you something. First of all, Fox News, they're completely against the entire liberal agenda. And when I say liberal agenda, I mean basic shit like women having vaginas and black people being free, that type of shit, okay? <laughs> and you watch it and you be like, what the fuck are they talking about? Because, see, I was watching Fox News the other night and I'm talking about for two hours, these people were on the TV talking about some. You know what the problem with this country is? It's those gays. And I was like, really? Why are we still having this conversation about gay people and gay marriage? Really? And they had this man, he was like, I don't know why y'all letting these gays get married. Y'all are going to bring the destruction of Jesus upon this earth. And I was like, really? And then on top of that, he was like, I was looking at the news the other day, and there was this man out there he had on a sundress. It was the most disgusting thing I ever saw. I was like, really? No, really? No, because seriously, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. But after looking at the news for two or three hours and seeing an unstable economy, a shaky health care system, kids get killed on the street, an unjust government, a corrupt government, an un unjust legal system, what else? Doctors waste money that we should be using on finding cures for HIV and cancer and helping people get bigger titties, asses, and dicks. High gas prices, high tax rates on people who don't make money already. I think it's kind of refreshing to see something as simple as a man in a sundress. Like, seriously. <laughs> Especially if you put it with a matching pair of pumps, okay? <laughs> And the color of the dress go well with his skin tone? What is there to be mad at? Like, seriously. <laughs> and I'm like, why do you give a fuck about who's marrying who? It's not like we inviting you to the fucking wedding, so why do you care, you know? I am, I'm mad with Don Lemon. I don't care some people disagree because I do get on Facebook and I have debates with people. I completely disagree with Don Lemon, first and foremost, because he is a black gay man. We already don't have a lot of those that aren't caricatures on the TV. Then you got his stupid bastard ass coming along. Oh, I'm so pissed off with him. Coming along and talking about what the black community needs to do. I was like, really, bitch? Like, I'm talking about they start attacking the black family talking about some we're not traditional, and then you get like ministers and stuff, they get on top of it talking about some, oh yeah, that ain't right. And I'm like, the black family, black ministers, the black community, Latino, any minority community, we don't have a right to talk about traditional family because we got all kinds of crazy shit going on. We got kids who getting raised by their aunts, by their grandmamas, by their uncles, one of the cousins, one of the sisters, I'm talking about, and personally, it offended me because I am a product of a single home. Okay, I am. And see, we from North Carolina, so like down there where we're from, like we was already tough because like we kill horses and shit. You know, we did that type of shit. And see, I love North Carolina. I, I go visit every now and then, and I love North Carolina because we got those fat church ladies. You know, the ones with the wiggly arms. You know, y'all know the church ladies. I'm. <laughs> Y'all know the ones with the wiggly arms and they cook down at the church and they can't walk that good so they be out there like <sighs> and they hold on to the wall they be like oh Lord have mercy <sighs> you know and they be in the church kitchen you know they cook with a lot of butter you know they keep it in their pocket you know <laughs> You know, so they can't quite get to the stove that good. So, you know, they just sit on one side of the kitchen. They be like, you want another biscuit, honey? Well, I'm frying some fish right now. Ugh. Praise the Lord. They cook like Paula Deen. Y'all know Paula Deen, right? 
and, and while we on Paula Deen, we can take a second to talk about Paula Deen. Now, a lot I don't know because I have some very different opinions about a lot of things. I personally, I support Paula Deen. I do. I don't feel like she's a racist. Let me explain myself because I don't want nobody in here judging me because there's a bitch over here judging me right now. Okay. <laughs> Personally, I support Paula Dean because they asked her, they said, are you a racist? She said, no. And they asked her, they said, have you used the N-word? She said, of course. And if you really want to be honest, if you ask a lot of white people to be honest, <laughs> if you cut one off in traffic, all of them have not hit the steering wheel like, God damn it, that TD bopper, because I know I've been in traffic. <laughs> and been all kind of silverback gorilla monkeys and all kind of shit. <laughs> Especially up there on Connecticut Avenue, okay? I know I've been all kinds of crazy shit up there, you know. And I got white friends who won't say the word, but God knows what their email password might be. I'm scared. <laughs> like, I thought about it like, what if I just go type up, type up in there, you know, pick a ninny nigger. I got in Bethany email. <laughs> but I am not, like I am not upset with Paula Dean, and this is why, for a lot of reasons. So like I said, they asked her, they say, are you racist? She said, no, but I have used the word. Okay, I can take honesty. But if they would have asked her, are you a racist? And she'd have said, no, and I never used the word. Then they'd have went to her house and found, you know, nooses hanging up in the kitchen and all kinds of shit. Then I'd have been upset, you know. And personally, I met Paula Dean a couple years ago. I did a show down at the DC Convention Center. And on the other side of the Convention Center, they had the Food Network was over there. So I saw Paula Dean and she came up and she was like, hey, how are you? And I was like, oh my God, I love you. You know, she introduced herself and then she invited me to come work on her plantation. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> No, seriously, but I met her and she was a sweetheart. Like, I really liked her. I thought she was a really nice person, you know. So personally, I didn't get racist vibes from her, but I got friends who always give me the what if factor. And I say, well, what if? And what if Paula Dean is racist? Like, what if she does have some secret racist cookbook about black people, you know, with some crazy racist recipes in there, you know, like back of the bus biscuits, you know. <laughs> Or some hooded white sheet cake or some shit like that. Like, <laughs> wouldn't that be fucked up? <laughs> but I personally don't believe Paula Dean is racist. I personally love Paula Dean. I eat a stick of butter every day and I'm gonna do it till they put that bitch back on the television. And my cholesterol high shit, Food Network need to stop playing and get her back on there because I need to get back on my regimen, okay? But I love Paula Dean. Because Paula Dean would kill a bitch. You know, Paula Dean, she come on TV, you know, she'd be like, hey, y'all. Now, today, we're going to make some iced tea. Now, to make this iced tea, all you need is three sticks of butter. You'd be like, in the iced tea. <laughs> Get the hell out of here, not in the iced tea. <laughs> I have an aunt who I absolutely love, my Aunt Jackie. I love me some Aunt Jackie. <laughs> And everybody got that relative. You know that one relative that dr be drunk all the time? You know, and I love my Aunt Jackie because my Aunt Jackie, she shows up loud, late. She a start a fight, make a plate, and leave, you know. <laughs> like, she one of them ones who will come down to, you know, a, a picnic or something, and be like, bitch, don't hold my arm. I got something to say. <laughs> I love my Aunt Jackie, you know. I actually love her too because she's the first one in the family who accepted me as gay. Like when nobody else knew, well everybody knew, but they were just throwing holy oil on it. Um, <laughs> and she was the one, she was sitting on the front porch one night and she was smoking her little cigarette and she was like, hey boy, come here. Yeah. I'm tired of you telling people you're not a fag. Damn, 
damn, this shit is strong. <laughs> I choked on the cigarette. I almost did that the way you be doing them dicks. <laughs> Oh, don't look at me like you don't be sucking dick. You suck dick. You don't got that underbite for no reason. Come on now. <laughs> I knew you was gay when you was born. Oh, don't no. When you were born, you was a pink baby. But that wasn't a skin condition. That was sugar. What you looking at me like that for? Bitch, I'll bust you upside your head. <laughs> Big homo. <laughs> windmill me, I'll windmill your ass back. <laughs> I knew you were gay when you was three years old. You like your bottle a lot. Huh? Look at the way you're talking to me, talking about, <laughs> I do what? <laughs> you got a lot of sugar in your tank. I'm getting diabetes just looking at you, shit. <laughs> well, I'm gonna tell you something. No, you, you were definitely gay. I remember when you was three years old, they put you in that little walker, you just used to drop glitter all over the house. That glitter came right out your pamper. You was a sissy baby, okay? <laughs> Prancing around the house like a little smurf. <laughs> and you used to switch in your pamper, had a little thong hanging out your pamper, you was gay. <sighs> but I'm gonna tell you something, if you're gonna be a fag, you make sure you be the best goddamn fag you can possibly be, okay? And if somebody call you a fag, tell them bitches to make sure they put a number one on the front of that motherfucker. <laughs> and use them motherfucking condoms too. <sighs> when you ride them dicks. <sighs> oh, don't sit in here talking about somebody do, but bitch, please, you a bottom, okay? I know all that. <sighs> You swallow that, whole for, that sofa whole when you sit on it. <sighs> but it's okay, I don't give a fuck if you are gay. Be a faggot, you be proud of that shit, and if somebody got something to say about it, tell them I beat their motherfucking ass, okay? And you keep a can of vegetables in your purse or your bag and you knock the shit out of them, you hear me? Now you be gay, you be a fag, and that's the end of the conversation, all right? Now go in there and give me some of that dry ass potato salad your other aunt made with her bitch ass. I love my Aunt Jackie, that bitch is. <laughs> it's a little moments like that, just, I don't know, that makes life a little bit sweeter. You know, we all got that type of relative, you know? Um, um, I'm actually, I'm doing a lot though in my life. I'm happy because um, if y'all can't tell, I am getting old, like I am. I'm, I'm getting old, I know y'all can't tell, but I'm 65, okay? Y'all can't tell, because black don't crack, okay? So, no. <laughs> No, seriously, no, I'm playing, I'm like, I just turned 28, and um, I know, all, oh, I hush, okay? No, because in gay years, 28 is old as shit, okay? Y'all know, like, and I always tell people, I need to sign up for gay ARP, like, it's time, okay? <laughs> no, because I actually, I do like a lot of shows and stuff, I did this resort, and um, I was on my way back, back to my room after the show, and so this old queen was out there, so he came up to me, he was like, where are you going, darling? And I was like, oh, I'm going back to my room. He was like, you out here yawning and carrying, up, carrying on like you old. I was like, I am old. I'm tired. I'm about to go back to my bed. He was like, and how old are you again, Miss Thing? I was like, 28. He was like, oh, please. I was like, I need to sign up for gay RP. He was like, <laughs> really, bitch? I was like, yeah. <laughs> So if you're 28, you need to sign up for gay RP, and I'm 57, what does that make me? I was like a zombie. No. <laughs> he cussed my ass out too. You know them old queens are reaching down. 
It's like, fuck you, bitch. You can suck my ass with a McFlurry straw, bitch. I'll whoop your motherfucking ass. I was like, oh, shit. They read you down, make you go back to your room and hide under the bed, you know. But my sister got these badass kids. Like, these kids are bad as shit, right? And I don't know anything about kids, right? I learned about kids looking at Door to Explore, Sesame Street, and stuff. Plus, when we were kids, like, we were completely different than the kids that's out now. Like, we... I just, I'm talking about, it's unbelievable. Like, hey, they do shit I could never, I would be dead, bitch. I could never. And see, plus, we didn't have internet. Like, we had to make toys. Like, we used to steal grocery carts from Safeway. I'm talking about, we used, you know those little 25 cent things? You go to the machine and get the little ball and they give you the little prize inside. We used to make mud pies and windmill bitches on the playground. But now, it's like kids be in the house rolling blunts watching Scandal. You be like, what's going on? Like, and I'm ultra liberal. Like, I'm not a traditionalist at all, but I do miss having real grandmamas. Like, see, like real grandmamas balance shit out. Y'all remember real grandmamas? Like, they used to wear the lopsided wigs and they had the little nappy hair on the back, you know. And they wore the big church hats, you know, and they'd be like, oh, you want another biscuit, honey? You know, stuff like that. Those, like, but it's like now, like a grandmama used to be 65, 70, was a church mother, cooked down at the church, volunteered in the community, made cookies, whoop your ass if you was out of control. But now you look around, you know, you just ask somebody, be like, hey, girl, how are you doing? Like one of my friends, I am not lying. This bitch is about 25. Her mama is 38 years old. And I was like, God damn, what do you remember about childhood? Playing with my mom on the playground after doing recess? Like, what? <laughs> no, it's crazy. I, um, I do a lot of traveling, too. I'm going to tell y'all some crazy, this is some stuff we got to talk about real quick. I do travel a lot. I actually, I just came back from Atlanta too. I, I love Atlanta. Atlanta is one of my favorite cities. I wouldn't stay down there because them queens are messy, but I love Atlanta, right? Atlanta is beautiful. I love Atlanta because everybody's gay in Atlanta. It's just, I'm the, everybody's gay. I'm talking about, even I was walking down the street one day, homeless guy was shaking, shaking his little cup. He was like, hey baby, you got some change? I was like, no, I don't think I have anything. Well, you a top or a bottom then? I was like, what? <laughs> Y'all silly. <laughs> so a couple of other things. Did anybody go to the, um, the march, the, the march on Washington? I love the march on Washington. I really think that it really paid homage to the people who fought for, who fought for us, who came before us, and laid the groundwork so that we would be able to walk the paths that we walk today. And I love events like that. I love it. I was out there. I thought it was a beautiful ceremony until that humidity hit our Sharpton perm. <laughs> I was like, damn, Al. A lot of stuff came up. They um, actually, they were out there. Of course, the Trayvon Martin thing came up. I'm still pissed off about Trayvon Martin. I really am. That was some stupid, unjust shit that they did. I'm gonna tell you why I'm upset about Trayvon Martin. Of course, it was racial profiling. And let's be real, if that would have been, let's call a spade a spade, if that would have been a white woman that got killed, it would have been a bitch rotting under the jail right now. I mean, we know that. I mean, come on now. This is why I got upset. I mean, and I watched First 48, I watched Judge Judy, so I know the basic shit, okay? You gonna get on the telephone with the police and they told you to keep your ass in the car. And you gonna go in pursuit of somebody? That should tell you everything right there. Then on top of that, they talking about, oh, it was him on the tape screaming for help. I'm sorry, if you got a gun, you don't need to scream for help because you already got the help. I mean, come on now. And a lot of people don't understand. They say, oh, well, come on now. We took them to trial. Justice was served. We don't understand what y'all mad at. And I think we have a right to be upset. I mean, because some shit is just basic, plain, and simple. I mean, come on now. Paula Dean got in more trouble than Zimmerman did. I mean, come on. <laughs> this bitch had a stick of butter. He had a gun and both have caused high mortality rates in the black community. 
but I think it's safe to say that a stick of butter is a lot less dangerous, okay? I mean, come on now. You know, and I'm happy, like I was really happy to see the black community stand up and fight, like I love to see that shit, but at the same time, I feel like the same way we're out there fighting everybody else the way that they treat us, we need to treat each other a lot better. Like, we really do. Because we walk down the street half the time, we don't even say hi to each other. Somebody say hi to you, bitch, I don't owe you no money, you don't know me. <laughs> like, damn, I was just saying hi. You know. Do you, re what in the hell? <laughs> don't get that bitch no more alcohol. <laughs> but do you realize that because we don't come together as a community, we suffer shit that other communities don't suffer? Like, I'm serious, we do like shit like gentrification. And a lot of people try to justify gentrification. There is no justification for throwing motherfuckers out their community. You gonna jack up their rent rates and jack them up? I mean, cause you know, cause it's little shit. Like you see a Starbucks, you know some shit coming, you know. <laughs> Or you see a Whole Foods coming in 2016, you'd be like, oh shit, black people about to be eating healthy. They come knock on your door. Get your black ass out of here, you know. They make it hard to find weed, you know. And I'm not ashamed to talk about it because there are drugs in other communities that say, oh, well, you know, they had drug dealers living in the community. First of all, again, I watch my shit, never eat my shit. The goddamn drug dealers don't even live in the community. I mean, come on now, you know. And I hate this about gentrification because they move in and they give them real shitty names. Like you, I went up to Harlem and they call it so hard now. I was like, what? That type of shitty shit. Like, what type of shit? And then the thing that made me upset is now, in the, um, over there, I used to live over on Florida Avenue. You know, that was like Florida Avenue, Massachusetts Avenue. And now they call it Noma. I was like, Noma? What type of shitty shit? Noma. And I had a conversation with one of my friends. I was like, Noma? He was like, well, you know, actually, I think that any neighborhood that has a name, it should reflect that neighborhood. And I was like, well, you do got a point. And it makes sense to me now, you know, Noma, you know, Noma black people. You know, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> you know, and personally, like in this city, as a black man, I, like there's always been shit we've had to face, like catching a taxi cab, like that shit is impossible. You know, it is. I had this one friend from Africa, he was like, this shit is amazing. I was like, what is? Do white people control a car with their hand? I was like, what? Well. Like, Hi, I'm going to Chevy Chase. <laughs> and it's hard, like, especially getting to Southeast in a taxi cab, because you know, first of all, I gotta have my white friends to flag a cab down for me, right? <laughs> And that shit is sketchy hiding in the bushes like. <laughs> Y'all got the cab? All right. I'm going up by the White House. Like, okay, we got up by the White House. I was like, all right, now make this next right. You know, you go across that bridge, you're right in Southeast. That's how you do that shit. <laughs> and I love it, but it's a lot of stuff in our community that we have to deal with a lot. Like, Certain expressions I don't understand. Like, do you, re do you realize how we're controlled by like hip hop media, hip hop culture, and the church? Like, there's this expression called no homo. Have y'all heard of no homo before? That is the dumbest shit that anybody could possibly say to express their authentic heterosexuality. I'm sorry, that is just, that's gay as hell. And <laughs> if you don't know what no homo means, I'm about to explain to you, okay? Basically, no homo is something that straight guys say, and they can say the gayest shit they can possibly think of. But as long as they follow it up with no homo, that re-solidifies their heterosexuality, right? So you might be out, see two little boys, you know, playing basketball on the court. You know, one of them might be like, oh, son, your balls look real good in them sweatpants. I sure let you put one on my forehead. No homo, no homo. You be like, what? No, that was gay as shit, okay? That was... That was gay, you know. <laughs> and no homo is so ignorant because it sounds like something somebody would say if they went to Subway to order a sandwich, you know. Because I can see somebody going in Subway, you know, walking up to the counter, they're like, yes, welcome to Subway, how can I help you? No. <laughs> Don't do that, okay? 
It's not like they've been there like, yes, welcome to Subway. How can I help you? How can I help you? No, do you think you can walk up in there, you know, and be like, yeah, uh, let me get that uh, tuna. Yeah, give me that foot long. Yeah, uh, give me some lettuce. Some mayonnaise. Put some more in there. Keep going. Keep going. Y'all got some more in the back? All right, put some mustard on there then. What's them black motherfuckers? Oh, olives. Yeah, put some olives on there. And what's that? No, no homo, no homo. You know, that's... That's why I use this as my platform. I, um, I actually, I love doing this because I've been hurt by the church a lot. And so um, I was at this rally and I was surprised to hear these black Baptist ministers come out in support of gay marriage. I was like, what did he just say? I was like, say it again, say it again. And because see, I'm from North Carolina and I don't know how many of y'all know this. I don't know how many of y'all, how many old school Church of God in Christ, Pentecostal, apostolic, turn some furniture over, swing around on the chandelier, humana, 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 shake a tail, Father, thank you, Jesus, that type of stuff, right? <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Roll around on the floor, kick the shoes off like Patty LaBelle. I'm talking about it'd be crazy. And that's the type of church that I grew up in, you know. It's like every Sunday they would have us to come up and like they were serious in there because if you get pregnant out of wedlock, they will make you stand up in front of the church and apologize, right? And they will sit you down off the choir or the usher board or whatever it is that you own. And we're not gonna talk about the time I had to apologize for being pregnant. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> No, but it's like I hated it because every time I go down there and the pastor get the preaching, he'd be like, oh, yes, and pass that collection plate. Oh, yes, get your soul right with Jesus. And then the spirit would start moving, right? He'd be like, oh, the Lord is calling me right now. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to shake it, baby, baby, baby. Oh, Patty LaBelle, Shaka Khan, Christina Aguilera. And for real, for real, some of them pastors that be trying to call them demons, I'll be like, there's a homosexual demon in here. We're going to cast it out. Yes. <laughs> I'm not breaking my neck. They'd be like, the Lord hates homosexuals. Well, Donnie McClurkin, yeah. <laughs> I seen his Adam for Adam profile, bitch. Fish and loaves, yeah, right, okay. No, I had this one minister come up to me one time talking about, you know, the Lord hates homosexuals. I was like, God damn, he must despise your ass then. <laughs> and I hate it because when I used to go down there, like, I would go down there and, the, you know, the spirit would get to moving and everything. They'd be like, oh, yeah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I feel some spirits. There's some spirits we need to cast out up in here. La -la 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 -la. There's a spirit of homosexuality right over here. This is the fifth Sunday in a row. Really, bitch? <laughs> Meet me after service for one-on-one -on -one prayer. You know? <laughs> and I have to go down there, you know, and so when I go back to North Carolina in a couple weeks, I'm going to be there on a Sunday. And I already know I'm going to be sitting there minding my business and this bitch is going to be walking around the pulpit be like, oh, I feel the spirit of homosexuality right over here. You need to come up for prayer, son. Because that's what I went through growing up. It's like every Sunday it was like, we want that spirit of homosexuality to come out. Come out, homosexual demon. But I got something for their ass when I get back down there. I'm going to get down there, you know, he's going to be like, I feel a spirit of homosexuality right over here. 
come on up for prayer. And I'm going to go ahead on up there and get some of that prayer. We want that homosexual demon to come out. Come out, homosexual demon, and be like, hello. And if I feel the spirit moving, I'm going to be like, I know you're a T. I'm okay. Thank y'all so much for letting me get your respect enough to be here tonight. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. Thank y'all so much. I love y'all. Thank y'all. Take care of yourself. I love y'all. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much for coming out. Thank y'all. Take care of yourself. I love y'all.